You know, sometimes I think One Piece fans hate the beginning of the series more than the people who drop it. Every time the topic of starting One Piece comes up, there always seems to be the phrases of it gets better later on, or you just need to get to arc X, Y, or Z. I am not a big fan of these statements, particularly as someone who did enjoy the series from chapter one. That being said, I do understand the emotion behind these phrases. Personally, I have read the series five or six times from start to current publication since it was still in the beginning of Whole Cake Island. And there have been times where I myself have said the same things. As a whole, I would consider One Piece to be a very consistent series in its overall tone, characterization, and world building. However, the parts of the series that really hooks most people, the heartfelt drama, emotions, and intricacies that elevates the series as more than lighthearted fun, don't happen right away. Oda doesn't rush his development of the world characters in primarily light tone in order to force in the serious and dark underside that pokes out on occasion to really ground it. As such, the fans are afraid of people writing it off as silly childish nonsense before getting to the parts that really elevate it. But you know what? Nothing makes starting a series sound less appealing than insinuating the first 69 to 322 chapters are unenjoyable homework. Especially when One Piece does have a lot of strong points from the beginning that can be advertised. For such a long story, One Piece is quick to get things set up and to get the adventure started, making it easy to jump into. By the end of chapter 1, you know who Luffy is, a somewhat goofy idiot who is serious about his dreams and his friends, what he wants to do, become the king of the pirates and return Shanks' hat, and why he wants to do it, a desire for freedom and because he was inspired by his mentor and father figure Shanks. The first chapter also does a good job of setting up the standard tone for the manga. It's got lots of One Piece humor and exaggerated reactions, talks of dreams and expressions of friendship, but also some dark undertones slipping through with the red-haired pirates making it clear that pirates aren't heroes, Luffy stabbing himself in the face, and Shanks letting an arm be bitten off in order to protect Luffy. I mentioned One Piece's humor above, and humor is a big part of it. One Piece generally utilizes situational humor achieved through the natural character interactions of the series. It laughs in the face of perfectly cool characters, opting to give everyone humanizing flaws and ridiculous tendencies. These flaws, mixed with the dynamic and varied personalities of many different characters, are utilized to craft comedy from the way characters play off each other. The humor is further expressed the exaggerations that Oda's more cartoony art style allows. It's an art style that isn't like many other manga series out there and is usually off-putting to people at first. However, as a person becomes more invested in the series, the style almost always grows on them due to how perfect it is for the story. It stretches to embrace the overwhelming sensations of the series, whether that be wacky creativity or overwhelming emotions. The series functions on a level of absurdist logic, with world building that is consistent and never self-contradictory, leaving to that absurdism resulting not in broken immersion, but in an, oh, of course that's a thing here, reaction. And with that type of world building comes the unknown. One Piece really is a world where anything could happen. A new adventure around every corner, and by its nature of being a seafaring adventure going from distinct island to distinct island, you never know where or what you are going to find next. With my love of early One Piece Express, it's only fair to go over the things I think do improve once they make it to the Grand Line. The biggest thing is probably story narratives. To reach the strong emotional narratives that Oda thrives on, it requires time to set the world and characters fully. This means that the narratives do not hit the ground at full speed as he puts in the work to set up the main cast, their dynamics, and the world they inhabit first. East Blue does end strong in this matter, but that's still 69 chapters in, which isn't a short distance. This focus on propping up the main characters and world also leads to the early villains falling rather flat compared to how thematically and personally rich later villains are. The early villains are weaker and rather one note usually functioning more for their plots and standing out as individuals in their own right. Villains aren't the only thing that get more creative. Oda really saves his wacky and unique location ideas and double fruit powers for after entering the Grand Line. Intentionally so, as the shift from East Blue to Grand Line is supposed to be a shift from the fairly safe known to the crazy and adventurous unknown. After all, the East Blue saga really is a prologue to the epic of One Piece as a whole. 
When people read The Hobbiton from The Lord of the Rings, it's good, but very few decide that's their favorite part and the best The Lord of the Rings has to offer. However, a lot of what makes Lord of the Rings good is still present there. So back to the phrase, it gets better. What's my problem with it? As I said, it is a motivation killer, and focusing on the negative like that makes reading the series sound like more of a chore than the thousand plus chapters already do. There's a second reason too. That being that the statement is misleading towards what One Piece is. One Piece is a goofy pirate manga about freedom and found family. Yes, it tackles serious themes as it goes, and yes, it has dramatic, tragic, and dark character moments, but at its core, that's what it is. A scandalous thing to say, I know. This distinction is important because lots of times when people read One Piece, they latch onto their favorite parts, usually the dramatic bits, and really neglect the silly and creativity that makes up the majority of the series. The problem is selling One Piece as, once you get to this point, it's a dramatic series with occasional humor, is that it's frankly false advertising. People go into it with that mindset, and when they realize it's the other way around, they walk away disappointed and more angry towards the series than they otherwise would have been. I know people who have ranged from tolerating to hating the series, but still push through all the way to any lobby, expecting the series tone to flip. When the core of the series doesn't change, they feel resentful and lied to. A possibly worse fate is those who hate the goofy tone but do latch onto those serious bits. They make it all the way through the series and like or even love it. These are the people who are upset every time Oda does something goofy with his villains, or comes out with another crazy character design, or subverts who you would expect to win a fight with the comedic scene or strategy. They are stuck in a loop of perpetually coming back to the series with the image and expectations of standard drama, and being disappointed when that's just not Oda. In conclusion, one Piece isn't for everyone, and there's no such thing as perfectly universal media. There are people for which just get to X isn't going to work. Quite frankly, I'm not actually opposed to informing someone that it gets better as you go on. Just please do not make that your whole argument. Make sure it's only a small part of a description that actually sells the series as something enjoyable to consume and as what it really is. So. If you're willing to give a wacky, heartfelt adventure manga full of fun mysteries, camaraderie, freedom, and one of the most in-depth and creative worlds ever created, give One Piece a try. If you've got a friend you can manage to convince to join you, I've heard One Piece makes for a great buddy read. And if you happen to be allergic to goofy creativity and joy and just want a moody, serious, standard drama to read, One Piece probably isn't going to fill that itch. You can go read Monster or Attack on Titan or something like that, and just please stop trading One Piece like an inferior piece of media just because it doesn't fit your style. If any of you watch this and are like, this is such a terrible take, please let me know. I love hearing other opinions and perspectives. Otherwise, that'll be all. Bye!